When you think about self-trust, it's really the second brain where our truth and our trust lies. Self-trust is really tuning in to our divine guidance system. Building self-trust is the first part of the energy of being tribal. And it really is saying no oftentimes to make room for the yes. So self-trust is really about understanding what is true for us, what is connected to our core values, and how do we move forward in consistency. Hello, welcome to Leaders with a Mission. My name is Diana Castro, and today we have something amazing just for you. If you're struggling with your sense of belonging, if you feel insecure, if you feel like you are not finding your path, please stay tuned because we have something amazing just for you. Our guest today is Rena Whitaker, and let me tell you a little bit about her. She is an inspiring business coach and the author of Being Tribal. Her loving, empathetic, and authentic approach guides individuals to embrace their inner truth and self-trust, fostering a sense of belonging and leadership. With that, hello, Rina. Hello, Diana. How are you today? Well, I just think I have to bring you along to introduce me every single where I go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I'm great. I'm honored to be here and super excited to be in the room with someone that I admire and love so much. Thank you, my sister. I bless you for that. So <sighs> your book being tribal, tell me, what inspired you to, to write about this and, and what is your definition of tribal? I was inspired to write this book about eight years ago because I was coaching women and men in moving their lives forward. And I knew that the folks that really made big shifts in their life were the folks that had tribes around them. Tribes of people who were not exactly like them, but all rooting for them, right? They had common ground. They saw each other's humanity. And they really understood that everything is possible. They would, it would get folks out of their head of, I'm not enoughness. I'm too short, too tall, too thick, too wide. And they would say, you can totally do that. And that's kind of the essence of a tribe in many ways, to keep it super simple. Being tribal, the tribe, oftentimes is considered from, the, of course, we've been tribal since the beginning of mankind. We, we think it's the same like bloodline or same the same place where we come from, right? This one tribe, like I'm Chinook, I'm Chinook Indian tribe, I'm also Italian. So it could be only folks that were from the Chinook tribe, but that's not the essence of being tribal. It's really the, the centering of the core values that make tribal so important is understanding that we're all human, that we all have this common ground, that if we walk in someone else's shoes with empathy and compassion, and we create this culture of empowerment and advancement without competition to rise each other up, it's such a beautiful piece of being tribal and having a tribe around you who's rooting for you and you're rooting for them. So it is this wonderful exchange of energy. Beautiful. So I know that some of your methodology emphasizes some self-trust. Mm -hmm. So for those people, which I just promised them, stay tuned because if you feel disconnected or if you know someone, tell us about your methodology behind this tribal idea, but rooted in self-trust. Self-trust is really the connection to, when you think about self-trust, it's really the second brain. So we know we have a brain up here. We talk about this. But in Eastern medicine, we have they've known for centuries, and they try to teach us over and over, that we have this wonderful second brain where our truth and our trust lies. And self-trust is really tuning in to our divine guidance system. Mm. It's knowing, how does this feel to me? Mm. In fact... And the energy from which we create, we know this from Michelle, our coach, informs the energy of what we create. So how do I feel about this? Does this feel right or wrong? Do I say yes or no to this? Building self-trust is the first part of the energy of being tribal. And it really is saying no oftentimes to make room for the yes, because we say yes too many times in our life without thinking about how does this feel to me because we want to please other people so they will love us. So self-trust is really about understanding what is true for us, what is connected to our core values, and how do we move forward in consistency. 
I hear you because what you're saying resonates in the sense of when we say, oh, that doesn't feel right. It's usually like go with your gut feeling. We actually have language that explores that inner truth in our body. And oftentimes I feel like a lot of people that have neglected themselves mm -hmm. or left themselves behind to please others have like unwired themselves to be connected to themselves. So for some people, they're like, I never feel that. Is What would you say to someone that is like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, what do you mean? Like, I feel my truth. Like, how could they get back to that connection that they're born with? So here's a great exercise. I do this when I'm when I'm uh, doing a keynote on stage. I'll bring some up on stage. And I will say, okay, tell a truth. Like, tell the truth. Maybe it's where you live or your favorite food. And, and think about where does that resonate, resonate in your body? Is it in your throat, in your face, in your heart? Is there a warmth? How does it feel to tell the truth? So if you were to say... You tell something truth about yourself. Uh, I have three daughters. You have three daughters. Okay. When you yes. think about that, how does that feel to you just telling the truth? Oh my God. My heart just feels right. like yeah. alive. Because it's so, you know, you're beautiful girls, right? It's your heart, mind, and spirit. Okay. Now, I want you to tell yourself a lie. Oh, I live in Oregon. Right. Ugh. Right. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> like that's so, not true. Yeah. So how does that feel? Where does that show up in your body? Everywhere. Right? Like I feel like yucky. Yeah. We have, when I do this exercise with folks to really know where, what truth feels like for self-trust, they'll say, oh, it feels uncomfortable. Oh, my throat is constricting. I don't like, it's in my lower back. So even that connection to our body of where does truth, where does trust sit with us? Our inner wisdom. Yeah. Ancient inner wisdom because mm. we all have it. So I know you work a lot with leaders of organizations and how they create a sense of belonging and, and, and trust. What do you think is the biggest pitfall of leaders when, when it comes to creating that space? So the being tribal kind of energy cycle is trust and then respect and investment and belonging, accountability and leadership. And that Self-trust, you have to be able to have self-trust, right, to be a great leader and tuning into what feels right to you. And also, when you think about when you're leading folks, how do you build trust through consistency, doing what you say you're going to do? And also, when you're tasked to do something that you don't know how to do, say, I really don't know how to do this, but let's figure it out together. And then respect, self-respect is understanding boundaries, it's how we communicate, it's also, how you show up with respect in the time of day you communicate, communicated expectations, compassionate truth-telling, all those things that are really important in how we operate. When you think about belonging, it's like the 12 Days of Christmas song, right? Trust always has to start here. Self-trust to be a trust leader. Self-respect to be a respect leader. Self-investment and then belonging. That belonging is know me, care for me, and ease my way. Do you know yourself? Do you have self-belonging in saying, I really love who I am. I accept all of who I am, the things I can change and the things I can't change. We learned this from Brene Brown, right? Such a great leader in this space. Belonging is really knowing people, knowing on your team, who they are, what makes them special, what do they love, what are their hopes and dreams. It has to start with self-belonging and self-acceptance, and then encircling yourself personally with a tribe in your life or in your work with a tribe around you at work. So it's great for me. It's super exciting for me. I mean, I get all chilly and no, I get, <laughs> yeah, I get all the goods when I start talking to leaders and saying, let's talk about how do we create belonging, which leads to resilience, especially in such a time of so much burnout exhaustion, and what are we going to let go of that we don't need to do anymore? I love it. So I, I asked you that purposefully because sometimes we see leadership as something outside of us. Mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, or leaders or, or you know, whoever is in a leadership position, as, as an individual, we get to be our own self-leader. We get to all of these things that you mentioned, I feel like people get to apply it to themselves. Like you get to trust yourself. You get to belong 
to yourself because oftentimes we betray ourselves. Mm -hmm. So everything that you're saying resonates and it's it's really good to, you know, sometimes we're the best advisors for or for a friend. Like we're really good at telling our friends, this is what you should do, you, you should do. But when it comes to us, sometimes it's hard for us to take our own advice. So I love the, the idea that we get to apply same principles you're talking about to self-love and self-respect and self-belonging. What are the pillars? You, you kind of mentioned it right now, but can you go a little bit deeper into what it means to self-belong, self-lead, like to be tribal first with oneself, because we cannot give what we don't have, right? Um, so that we can be part of that bigger tribe. Go ahead. There's this old saying that's been around forever, your vibe attracts your tribe. Right. So if you're vibrating low and you don't have a lot of self-respect or self-trust, right? You're not sitting in a place of really owning your your spiritual self, your human self, your mental health self. If you're not owning that, you're going to attract folks that are in that same place. What did Jim Rohn say? You are the average of the five people you hang out with. So getting your vibration right and thinking, how do I trust myself? We talked about that a little bit. Self-respect is also, when you think about, here's a great example. Um, if I had a glass of water, the water would be even in the glass because gravity, right? Gravity keeps it even. But if you hold that up and you think, here is what I expect people to treat me. This is how I'm going to treat myself and I expect people to treat me a certain way. But then what happens is we lower water in the glass part of it just on one side, because we say, but I'll put up with a little bit more, or I'll put up with bad actors, I'll put up with a bad relationship, because I just want someone to love me. Yeah, right? we lower our standards. We lower our standards. And so part of that self-respect is really holding that space. So the six core values, of course, are trust, respect, investment, belonging, accountability, and leadership. And they stack upon each other. So when you think about how do I hold that boundary of what I want people to treat me like, it really comes down to being self-full, not selfish. Self-full is I know who I am, right? I know who I am. I know what my value is. And I'm going to expect that from my relationships. I'm going to teach my children that. I'm going to teach everyone around me that because they're going to see how I treat myself and how I hold that boundary. Because I know myself, I'm going to be able to make decisions faster because I'm like, how does this feel? Mm, doesn't feel good. Nope. Thank you so much. I appreciate that offer, but I'm going to pass. All of these things around respect and then investment really is how we, when you think about how we, how much, what we eat and what we, and how much water we drink and how much sleep we get, all those things that are really important to us. We also have to think about what we read what we listen to, and what we watch. Because we're also, that's kind of feeding our brain. It's feeding what we should be standard of. I mean, think about all the women, even my age at 58, you're much younger, our young women and young boys today thinking, oh, I have to fit into this look. I have to be a certain way. I have to wear certain clothes. I have to. So it just, our media, not only is it divisive and tries to tear us apart because what bleeds leads um, in the mainstream media, that's why there's so many folks who are trying to elevate that vibration, like yourself with Leaders with a Mission. How do we share really good, um, like- Soulful, soulful meaningful soulful, yeah. content, right? Yes. Like love yourself and, you, and you're so much more than you think you are. I think it's really important when we think about what we read, listen, and watch in our investments, what are we doing? How are we journaling? How are we meditating? All those things that are so important in investing. And then that belonging is also, again, um, I uh, accept all the things about me that I cannot change, right? My height. I used to be 5'7". I'm now 5'6 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I can't change that, right? I could put on heels, but it's not a permanent change. All those things. And also, you know, I have six little children and nine grandchildren. Um, this body has been through a lot and I love every part of it. We need to teach our younger people, both boys and girls, young men and women, they, they should love who they are and accept it and go, you know what? I have all this ability to 
to take the light I have inside of me that I've been created with and all the gifts that I know that are divine gifts that I've been given and then share that out into the world. Yes. That's our job. And we can't do that unless we are filling up our own cup. I feel like sometimes I often see, and I see this a lot in video, because I get to put people on the spot and put people to talk as a videographer, as owning a video production company, and filming women, I feel like a lot of women, this doesn't happen a lot with men, are very hard with themselves. Mm -hmm. They have such a bad inner critic. I'm like, there's times where I can tell women, you don't need a bully outside. You're your own bully. Like, oh my goodness, why would you speak? If you would have to live with someone all the time that is telling you, you're nasty, you're disgusting, you fat ass. Like, like it would be unbearable. Yet, they have that inner voice in a way. And I find it so hard to sometimes witness women do that when I see how beautiful and powerful and graceful and just there's so much beauty in them. So I guess the invitation is for women to be present to their inner voice and to tell that inner voice as if you were talking to your children, mm -hmm. hey, if you don't have anything nice to say, I'm gonna ask you to please stay quiet. And as a way to redeem that ugly thing, would you please say something nice to me? So that we can retrain ourselves. Because all of this, what you're talking about and what the promise to our audience is, if you feel disconnected, if there's something, if you don't feel like you belong, what can we do? What would you tell a woman that feels that she doesn't belong? Like what would be something that you could give her today right now so that she can give herself the opportunity to embrace all parts of her. I just, this is very relevant because I just finished this beautiful women's retreat a couple weeks ago. And we talk about, we have a top 40 playlist in our head of all the things we're not, right? We have a DJ up there spinning records, right? You know? <laughs> spinning records of all the things we're not. And we have to change a narrative. And there is the thought of let's talk about where that where does that story come from that you're not like where did it come from because we collect these stories like they're treasures we collect stories from our childhood we collect stories or narratives from moments in our life that weren't great and you can say i had the like i just did this keynote and the reviews came back in and it was like 90% said, oh, it was really great. We really loved it. And there was two people that said, well, you know, I thought she could have done a better job explaining it. And I was focused on those 2%. Like, what did I do wrong? So we all do it, even though I coach on this. This is my job. This is the thing that I'm passionate about, about changing the world. And yet it's really about changing that narrative and figuring out where did that come from? And then holding that up, like naming it. Oh, this came from when I was in fourth grade and I wrote a poem and my teacher thought I stole it because I couldn't be that smart to write a poem that well, Ouch. right? So is that true? No, that's not true. So using your logical brain to go, is this really something I should be holding on to? Is this serving me right yeah, now? Is this serving me? Right. So I'm going to let that go and I'm going to replace it with, I am very, I'm a creative writer. I am, you know, those affirmations are really important and not just affirmations of I am, but think about this. What's the emotion behind the affirmation? How are, Mel Robbins talks about this all the time, putting, putting into action. So replacing the top 40 playlist with top 40 hits of how amazing you are and how you were divinely created. Amen to that. Right? Divinely created to share your light and share your gifts to change the world. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So every human in this show gets asked this following question. What is your personal definition of leadership? Personal definition of leadership is... I mean, I love the idea of servant leadership. For me, I would never ask someone to do something I'm not willing to do myself, right? It's also important to know my gifts, like know what my gifts are, and then take my gifts and serve them out in the world, right? And in that leadership piece, it's also being very connected to how am I filling up my own cup first so I can be of great service and I'm not, I'm not serving from an empty cup, right? It is doing what you say you're going to do. It's walking your talk and it's being super authentic and owning 
when you make a mistake. I mean, it's just being a human, right? And we think we have to pretend to be something else. And, you know, I like being Rena Whitaker. I like her. And I've made terrible mistakes in my life. And I've made great, you know, opportunities, but I learn from those mistakes. And I think that's another part of leadership is learning from your mistakes and going, oh, yeah, and sharing it with other people so they don't feel so bad when they make mistakes because that's where we learn. That's beautiful. All right, so we all know that leaders are readers. Mm -hmm. What do you read? What are the things that fuel your soul? I'm reading um, The Body Keeps the Score right now. It's a wonderful book. Um, I'm also reading Traction. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Yeah, that's a really business. Yeah, love traction. Heavy book. Um, the the book that really I think immediately spurned me into change was You're a Badass. I mean, duh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I really um, am curious about Sinners and Saints. That's a great book that I just I like have it on my bedside. I haven't read it yet. I will also say that my husband is a couples and family therapist, so I read a lot of you know, marriage. Like he, he's like, I bought this book for you. So I read a lot of those books, but I would say the body keeps the score is one that I'm like, oh, so all that pain and guilt and shame that we have is sitting somewhere in our body and it's kind of excavating it out and really giving ourselves grace because it creates a healthy, healthy mind, healthy spirit, creates a healthy body. Beautiful. So that's a lot of beautiful uh, books for recommendation for our audience. Thank you for that. Um, where can people find more about you, Rena? Beingtribal.com is my website. Rena at beingtribal.com is my email. And I feel really, really lucky, like blessed. I mean, this has been a lot of hard work, right? When I left my philanthropy career um, after 26 years and I wrote my book and I'm almost done with my second book, which I'm super excited about, I just feel blessed. Like, we all have this path of greatness. Like, this is your path of greatness, right? All the amazing things that you do with leader, leaders with a mission and outside of this work that you do. We all have this path of greatness to shine our gifts out. And so I feel like this is my path of greatness. And I'm so honored that I get to do this every day. Awesome. I, I love your wisdom. I Every time I have to introduce you to someone, it's like, this woman is the embodiment of wisdom. And she definitely, after talking to her, your spirit would be lifted and you definitely would have more grace and more ease in your life. So thank you so much for coming over and to bless us with your presence, for flying to Miami to be here with us. We're so grateful for you. Thank you so much. It is my honor. I love you. I love you, my sister. <laughs> Okay, guys, so I hope you guys got a lot of inspiration from her. And if you're looking to amplify your visibility with the power of video, I'm gonna ask you and invite you to go to fourproductions.com and I'll see you there. Thank you, bye-bye.